Hey guys, welcome back to our urban homestead. Some of you have mentioned that you would like to see the more, I wouldn't say mundane or menial tasks of how I prep um, when I buy things in bulk to stock my pantry. And I thought I would take you along with that because I do have some of that to do. Um, I buy my burger in bulk. Most of the time it's from a local place. If I can't get it local, I get it um, from a local grocery store who does source local beef. Um, the butcher I prefer to use sometimes doesn't have what I want and that's okay. So I bought um, 10 pounds of burger and my son is actually coming over for dinner tonight. So he wants a meatloaf. I'm going to save, oh gosh, I don't know. This is probably three pounds of burger. Um, I'm just going to save this back, stick it in the fridge for right now so I can mix all my meatloaf stuff up. Um, and then I have already packaged these in like one pound portions. Yes, I weighed them out. <laughs> and I'm going to use my food saver to seal these. I also have some peppers that I got at a really, really good price. I already went ahead and cut, washed, cut all those, flash froze them. They're in my freezer waiting for me. I'm going to package those up as well. And I have a big block of cheese that I'm going to shred for the freezer. And I'll show you my trick on how to get your uh, big blocks of cheese not to stick into one big clump when you um, shred them, stick them in your freezer. Most of the time, if you do it, uh, when you go to thaw it out, you know, it like just clumps together and it is not good. I also made some biscuits. Um, those have, are in the freezer freezing. I'll share with you that recipe. And so yeah, um, those of you who wanted to see these little tasks that I do and how I do it, I hope you enjoyed this video. So with the food saver bags, um, I like to flatten the meat out as much as possible. That way it just lays, you know, fits better in the deep freezer and it thaws a lot quicker. Okay, guys, let's see what I'm doing here. If you don't have a food saver, I really, really recommend that you get one. They are a great kitchen tool to have and they are fairly inexpensive. Um, in my Amazon link, there is the one that I use and recommend. So feel free to check that out if you want to. So I'm just gonna get all of these vacuum sealed up. And just like that, I have five packages ready for uh, dinners, a couple pounds for tonight's dinner. And I did make cheeseburgers the other day with some of it as well. I'm gonna go stick these in my deep freeze. It's important when you put things in your freezer that you put the newest stuff on the bottom. That way you don't have like, you know, freezer burned meat or you're using something that's been in there for two years. So these will go to the bottom. All of the others will come on top of this and I'm gonna grab the biscuits and the peppers and we'll do those and then we'll get to the cheese. All right, so I just pulled the biscuits out of the freezer and I'm just gonna pop them in a Ziploc bag. And then that way when we want biscuits for dinner, I just have to grab them put them on, you know, my cast iron skillet or a baking pan. And you have fresh homemade biscuits and you don't always have to go through the trouble of, well, it's not really trouble, but you know, sometimes you're busy. These also make um, great pot pie toppers or, you know, uh, dumplings. And I will link 
not wink, um, I will insert how I went about making these right now. When you are making biscuits, it is super important that your butter and your buttermilk is really, really cold. So this, is, this has been in the freezer for a minute. And I like to grate it. You can cut it into small cubes, but I really, um, I think that shredding it or grating it just is better because then you get like the flakes of butter and it makes them nice and fluffy and light. So I'm gonna double the recipe and for a single recipe, it calls for a half a cup of cold butter. And even though this has been in the freezer, just the heat of my hands is melting it. So then I'm gonna shred up the, this other stick. So like I said, because we want everything to be really cold, the sh uh, grated shredded butter, I'm gonna stick back into the freezer until I get everything else together. Um, yeah, you really want super cold butter, super cold buttermilk as well. So we're gonna need two, two cups plus two thirds of a tablespoon. Like I said, I'm doubling the recipe of buttermilk. If you don't have buttermilk, all you need to do is measure out your regular milk and then add a tablespoon of lemon juice and that will create the buttermilk. I'm gonna shake this up though. But there's nothing like the taste of like actual buttermilk, right? So two cups, and then I'm gonna just like manually add in the, manually, what? <laughs> um, just add in the couple tablespoons of that. So we're gonna do almost a tablespoon, not quite, for a double batch. And then again, I'm gonna pop this into the freezer just so everything is nice and ice cold. I'm just refilling my flour jar right now to get ready for making the biscuits. Do you guys have a favorite biscuit recipe that you use? If you do, I would love to know what it is. Feel free to either um, email me or leave it in the comments. You guys know I love trying all of your recipes. And I love me some biscuits, so. <laughs> I buy my flour in bulk and I vacuum seal it in food saver bags and uh, typically I vacuum seal enough to fill up, just about fill up my canister. So, you know, there's a little life hack from me to you on that. Okay, so since we're double batching this, we need five cups of flour. Two, three, four. Two tablespoons of baking powder. One, two, 
two. Uh, we'll need four teaspoons of sugar. Like I said, I'm doubling, so everything I say cut into half. Four teaspoons of sugar since we're doubling. I can't remember what I just said. Shocker, right? <laughs> and two teaspoons of salt. So honestly, I have never done biscuits like this before. I typically make biscuits when we're gonna eat them. So I am very excited that Missy told me this is how she preps her stuff and that it works out really, really well. Then I'm just gonna give all of this a whisk together that way there's like no clumps of the baking powder and whatnot. Because the trick to a light fluffy biscuit I think that's our dishwasher. It's on the dry cycle. So if you see like smoke, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. It's not the, not the flour. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the dishwasher. So the trick to a light fluffy biscuit is, and flaky, is cold butter, cold milk, buttermilk, whatever you're using, and not over mixing it. That's why I am mixing all of this up first before we add our cold ingredients, which we're gonna do right now. All right, we've got the ice cold butter, ice cold butter milk. Let's try to crumple that super cold. And then I like to kind of mix anytime I'm making biscuits. Um, she just gave me the ingredients. She didn't tell me her method, but this is my method for making biscuits. And then you mix your really cold butter in with your dry. cold buttermilk until it comes together, just comes together. And then we're gonna flip this out onto here, uh, the silk hat, but I need to take my rings off. I know it doesn't look like, <laughs> like biscuit dough. That's okay because we have to knead it a little bit. Oh, 
Uh oh. Now the oh, dogs are getting a nice little treat there, guys. Might need to add another drop or two of buttermilk. Not, I mean, you really don't want too much though, because maybe not. We might be good. So, do you see how I'm like? folding it, folding and pressing. And I don't know if you guys can see, but you can see the can see the flakes of butter. I do, I don't know. I don't like a tough biscuit, so. I don't wanna add. Yeah, I might add just a smidgen of buttermilk. So I'm gonna grab that out and I'll show you how you can add it to your dough when it's like this. Okay, so I'm just gonna lightly pour That's much better. It's a messy job, you guys, but. All right, so that's perfect. It's fairly sticky, but not soupy. And now we're gonna roll this out. So to roll it, what we're gonna do is flour the surface. rolling pin, a good flour. And then I like to start in the middle, push down, roll out, roll out. Quarter turn. If you need to, dust the top with a little more flour. Can you guys see all of the little flecks of butter? Probably not. Another quarter turn. And the general rule of thumb for biscuits is you want to roll your biscuit dough half as half the thickness that you want them to be.
Reagan, will you go get me a from the pan canny room pantry a small mouth canning jar? Thank you. I got a piece of had a piece of the uh, <laughs> butter wrapper in there. <laughs> That's not good, you guys. Grab the lid first. I don't know why. I did. No, honey, the ring. So I did it right the first time. She just grabbed me a jar. And then I'm just gonna, for the rest, kind of flatten it out with my hands. <laughs> Thank you, honey. All right, so it's all rolled out when you cut your biscuits it's important that you just push it down you don't want to push and twist what that's going to do is it's going to pinch off the edges and you're not going to get a nice big rise on it so so push down and you can like shake back and forth. You don't ever want to twist. Okay, so I'm gonna get all of these cut and I'm gonna get a cookie sheet for them to go on. So see how you have this, that, that right there, when it cooks, is going to allow it to rise. If you twist, it would pinch that off, and it would not allow for a nice, tall, flaky biscuit. All right, so these are the biscuits that I have ready. Uh, I think I'll bake a couple off just so you guys can see how beautiful they are. My meatloaf's in the oven. If you want to see how I make my meatloaf, I will link the video to that in the description below. It is thebomb.com. I pulled out the three trays of peppers from the freezer that were cut, frozen, and now I'm going to work on getting my bags ready. I find it personally easier to make the bags first, fill them, and then vacuum seal them. To me, it just seems uh, a little more streamlined. So I'm gonna go ahead and make up my bags and I'll be back. When you freeze your peppers, wash them, cut them, and then freeze them on a cookie sheet and then put them in the freezer before you put them in your bags. What that does is makes them not stick together when you go to freeze them. And I have to run down and get some more freezer bag, uh, food saver bags from my basement. Quite honestly, I don't feel like doing that. So after this, <laughs> I'm just gonna stick them in freezer Ziploc bags. Um, and it still works just fine. But like I said, if you, you know, do the prep of the peppers, um, onions too, and then freeze them, and then package them, you can just unseal that bag you know, grab a cup or two or whatever you need for your recipe. And they're not all stuck together in like one big nasty clump and you don't have to bang it on the counter or take a knife and chisel it or anything like that. So that is um, 
what I like to do with my peppers and my onions. These peppers were, we don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, not like most people celebrate Valentine's Day. It's just like another day. I don't need one day for April to show me that she loves me or for me to show her that I love her. Um, so we don't really celebrate it. And she worked, you know, she managed restaurants for 25 years. She was never home on Valentine's Day. So, um, these peppers were actually my Valentine's present. <laughs> Valentine's present because we don't, you know, we just don't do that. Um, I got all of these peppers for $2. She got them on clearance and she thought I would just, that would really make my day, which it did. So three freezer, you know, three trays worth of peppers um, for our freezer. Really, I know, I know. Some girls want flowers and that is not me, you guys. Um, I was very excited about this gift of peppers for the freezer. <laughs> so three trays. I thought that was a really, really good deal for two dollars. Are you kidding me? Come on. Cannot beat that. So I'll probably get two. Two gallon baggies and then what I did in the um, vacuum saver bag but I just thought I'd share that with you <laughs> so back into the freezer these go see how they're all not clumped together all right so I have almost a whole four block four pound block of cheese. So I'm gonna show you how I get all of this shredded and into individual bags for the freezer and how you can make them not all the shreds stick together when you thaw them out. So I have the four pound block of cheese here. What I like to do and this is just shy of four pounds because, full disclosure, I have snacked on it. <laughs> so I cut it into chunks like this. And then, um, So I'm going to get that done and then these are what I'm going to use to make my shreds. So I use my food processor on the grating edge and cornstarch. We'll talk about that in a minute. But right now what I'm going to do is I am going to get this cheese shredded and I'll be back. So now here is my secret to keeping your shredded cheese not clumping together. If anyone has ever shredded cheese, then try to put it in freezer bags, freeze it, defrost it. It all stays together in one clump. Um, so store-bought shredded cheese has like potato starch and all kinds of other stuff in it. I just use corn starch. I don't know if you guys can see that cornstarch. It works 
beautifully. I'm going to show you how to do it. So I have my bowl of shredded cheese. Um, I don't really have a measurement. I would say a quarter of a cup to start. And then you just kind of like mix it all with your hands. Perfect. And then I'm going to get these into, I think probably quart size bags is what I'll do these in. And then I'm gonna freeze it. And when I pull them out of the freezer, I'm telling you, they will do just what they're doing now. They won't stick together. It will not be one cohesive clump. It's a beautiful thing. For my final trick this evening, <laughs> I have a big pound or hell, three pounds of bacon. That I pulled from the freezer and I'm going to get this cooked and prepped up to refreeze, but it's cooked. So I thought I would bring you along on that journey as well. I'm going to start by cutting this package completely in half. Half of this is going to be crumbled bacon for the freezer, and the other half is going to be uh, bacon strips for, like, breakfast. So for the crumbled, I like to cut it first. Cast iron, oh, I don't know if you can, oh, yep, there we go. Cast iron skillet over here. I'm going to turn that on, get that heating up, and I'll be back. So I have my cookie sheet lined here. I just put some paper towel down. Cast iron is nice and hot, I believe. gonna wash my bacon hands and then just woo, kind of break this up oh no and then saute it So you know, it's nice and crisp, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Get out a, a pint 
maybe two empty pint jars because we're gonna save this bacon grease. It is wonderful for frying eggs or hash browns or literally anything. And so, you know, everything from the bacon is gonna get used and saved. All right, so we've got our crumbled bacon for, you know, any recipe that you would need a crumbled bacon for. I'm gonna spread that out onto the paper towel here. Got the bacon pieces there. Mason jar with a funnel. A sieve. And then pour that into there. This bacon grease is gonna get set to the side so it can cool and then I can use it in any dish that I want to and we're just gonna have a snack of that bacon. Turn the pan back on and then we're gonna do the strips of bacon. So you can, you know, bake the bacon, but y'all know my oven doesn't work and I have the very little oven. So we're just going to do small batches of fried bacon. Oh, I'm going to turn that heat down for crying out loud. This might be a little too much. We'll make it work. All right, first batch of the sliced bacon is out. I'm sorry if you can... There, turn it off. I have the uh, vent going. So the sliced bacon, this is like stuff that we can reheat for breakfast. You know, they're half slices, but they're still slices. And I have one, one or two batches left to go. Yes, this is what three pounds of bacon cooked up looks like. I know, doesn't, does not look like a whole lot. So we will not uh, name any names. Hey, <coughs> bro. I resemble that remark. <laughs> we will not hold any judgment against said person that we will not name. <laughs> hey, bro. Um, Whatever. Um, <laughs> so we will just store the crumbles.
in a quart bag. Now, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I also obviously taste tested. It's for, um, I mean, strictly science, right? Like, I don't even really like bacon, but. All right, so this is how I store our bacon in the freezer for crumbled bacon. So three pounds of bacon, I know. That was one pound and I'm gonna say that this is two pounds after it's cooked. And I think that's just sad. <laughs> like it does not look like a whole lot. But again, I do like to put a, you know, some paper towel in here. Hey, gringo. Because it does absorb the grease. And then all you have to do is pull this out you know, whatever amount you want and you microwave it or you can air fry it or do whatever. But that is how I prep cooked bacon for the freezer. So thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen today while I tackled some of those tasks. I know it was a bit of a longer video and I appreciate you sticking around through the whole thing, but some of you have asked for videos like that. So that's some of the things that I do when I buy in bulk to stock my freezer. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. And until next time, guys, abundance and blessings to you. Bye-bye.